Man, it's hard to publish a video after taking a break from it for so long, but I'm doing one today to get a little momentum because I have a lot that I want to share now that I've made some good progress on my indoor garden upgrades. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about my goals for this build and do a quick rundown of what I've built so far and the functionality that the system's going to have. I've been documenting my new build from the get-go, and I have quite a bit of footage built up. Right now, I'm probably 95% finished the hardware side of things, and I've just begun programming everything in Home Assistant, so I'll be working on the system as I produce videos to catch up to the point I'm at. I have some plans started, though, so the pressure is on to finish things up and get the system tuned up and ready to go. A lot of you have probably seen the first iteration of this project where I built out a control box with a whole pile of pumps and breadboards and different components and used it to run this 4x6 tent to grow some vegetables. I was using a mixture of Home Assistant and some Arduino code that I wrote in this first system which worked well but added a layer of complexity. For my new project, I've kept a few main goals in mind. The first was to expand my grow space and make better use of what I'm building. I'm going to be growing peppers in this 4x4 space, tomatoes on the 2x4 side, cucumbers in this 2x4, and I'm going to try to stake a zucchini plant vertically in this 3x3, which is currently doubling as a 3D printing tent. I'm also doing an NFT rack for lettuce and strawberries, that's nutrient film technique, not non-fungible token, and I'm going to grow a single super hot pepper plant in my 5x5 testing space just to see how big I can get the one plant, and this will make it easier for me to move the plant in and out so I can continue to test lights in here as well. I was tempted to make this whole space a grow room, and I almost did, but I like the idea of having everything in separate tents, so I have a little more control over the climate in each space, as well as more control over the light cycles for the different plants. Plus, I wanted to keep it easy to disassemble and move stuff if I need to. For those that will inevitably ask why I'm not growing cannabis, it is legal to grow it here in Canada, of course, but I'd rather dedicate this space that I have in the basement here to things that my whole family can benefit from. Another goal of mine was to clean things up. I referred to my first control box as a prototype in the video, and it sort of was because I took what I learned and tried to move as much as I could over to PCBs for this build. I had never created a PCB prior to this, so I had a lot of fun learning the design software and assembling the boards. I also drew up some enclosures and 3D printed them so I could house my power supplies and PCBs for each one of my little stations. The last main goal of mine was to keep this simple and easy to replicate. I'm not trying to do anything too fancy here, but rather create sort of a base system that handles the basics but could be expanded on if desired. I'm cutting out all the Arduino code and will be doing 100% of the programming in Home Assistant this time. I'm not going to be using Node-RED to program this system as I've tried it and have obviously tried the automation functionality built into Home Assistant and I've just found that I prefer to use the vanilla Home Assistant tools and YAML to build my automations. You can also use these to create blueprints within Home Assistant which will make it easier to share the code too. Okay, so here's what I've got going on right now. Like before, I'll be running everything on Home Assistant, which is an awesome free software that is incredibly powerful for all things home automation. This time, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4, and instead of a micro SD card, I'm going to run off of a 240 gig SSD. So I've got plenty of storage for all the data that flows in from the sensors, and I don't need to worry about burning out the micro SD with write cycles. I'm referring to these black boxes as my stations, and they house the PCBs I built as well as a power supply underneath the PCB. I'm using one of these stations to run each of my tents, although they can run two tents if both share a reservoir. The station I have beside my 2x4 tent is going to run the 2x4 plus the 5x5 beside it. Every one of these stations has a reservoir associated with it, and all the wired sensors I'm using in each tent connect back to the PCBs inside these boxes. There's a microcontroller in each box that communicates over Wi-Fi with the Raspberry Pi that's running Home Assistant, which passes along commands to the devices hooked up to it and shares data it receives from the sensors back into Home Assistant. Each of the stations gets an ultrasonic sensor to measure the level in its associated reservoir. They get a waterproof temperature sensor for monitoring res temps. 
and each box also gets an Atlas Scientific pH circuit. I have a spot on the PCBs to mount an Atlas Scientific isolated carrier board, which is the purple board you see. And you can plug in different types of stamps on this board. I'm using the red pH stamp, which allows me to attach a pH probe and monitor reservoir pH. I'm going to use the pH data to automate the two pumps on the lid of each station box to maintain my target pH level in each res. One pump will dispense pH up solution, the other pH down. I included an additional header on the PCB, so if I can afford it in the future, I can stack another of these purple carrier boards on top of the first one and add a conductivity stamp so I can measure EC in the reservoirs as well. There's also a Wi-Fi controlled power bar for each station for things like pumps and lights or anything that I need to be able to turn on and off and an always on power bar for stuff like exhaust fans and for the control boxes themselves. I have some additional Wi-Fi controlled outlets for instances where I need to run things like high powered lights that I would prefer to put on their own controlled outlet. In each tent, I've got one of these little devices that I've printed that mount to these flexible arms. Inside here is a PCB that can hold two BME-280s for sensing humidity and temperature. And I've also got an infrared sensor built into the enclosure so I can sense leaf temperature and come up with a real VPD reading in each tent. These get wired back and connect to their respective stations. I've got PWM control of the exhaust fans for each tent. I'm using the newer AC Infinity fans with the EC motors that take a PWM signal. I have a couple flood detection inputs that will sense if there's nutrient solution on the floor, and I have two dimming circuits to control grow lights that are capable of PWM dimming. This will be nice for my NFT rack since it gives me separate control over each level. Those VPD sensors in the tent that I showed you a minute ago run on the I squared C bus. And it's easy to add more to the system by tacking it onto that same bus. So for example, you could wire in a CO2 sensor that runs on I2C without having to make any changes to the PCB. So it gives you some flexibility for future expansion. I'm keeping my main control box in place, although it's looking pretty empty now. I'll be reusing my same Amazon tablet as a place that I can control the system while I'm down here if I don't have my phone or if I want a bigger screen. This location will serve one main purpose now, which is creating new batches of solution for the reservoirs at each station. I'm going to keep using my Wayscale method to get a nice and accurate reading of how many liters are in the mixing reservoir at any given time, and I'll use the dosing pumps to dispense nutrients into the res so I don't have to measure them out myself. The pumps are being underutilized in this configuration for sure, but you could adapt them to a fully automated system where the reservoirs drain, fill, and dose themselves and get much more utility from them. That or something like a DWC system where it can provide top-ups with dynamic ratios between the different nutrients or whatever you can think of, it really just becomes a programming thing. I'll also be using my magnetic stirring system to keep all the newts properly mixed. Well, that about sums up a high-level overview of things for the first video. If you're interested in this project and thinking about building your own, then please consider subscribing to the channel and you can tag along as I sort of vlog my way through the build from start to finish. Like my original build, I'll be open sourcing my code so others can build upon and improve this and share in the fun. We'll see you on the next one.